pray you never are forced to shoot in self-defense. But if you must, then you must be ready. That's why USCCA exists, because every responsibly armed American should have the training and education to navigate a self-defense situation. And should you ever need it, the 24-7 critical response team is right there for you. To discover more about USCCA, visit uscca.com backslash G-O-R. Act now because the life you save could be your own. USCCA.com slash G-O-R. Well, hello, stranger. Hey, hey. Been a while. It's been a hot minute. Yes, it has. And I'm sure you've been busy as a one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest. You know, when you're sick, you tend to slow down a little bit. Oh, that's right. You weren't feeling feeling very well. I got what everybody else had. What'd you have? I haven't had nothing. Some kind of cold with a cough. Nothing exciting. Stay away from me. No kidding. Did you get anything done? I stayed away from you. Well, that's beside the point. But did you get anything done? (laughs) Thanksgiving. We accomplished that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I had a guy give me the best idea ever. He went down to his family. He was going to get together. They all got sick. Yeah. Yeah. And his wife says, don't look at me. I'm not cooking. And they went, okay. So he actually went to Albertsons and bought two Hungry Man turkey dinners, put up candles and decorations. And he says, Dave, I only paid $5.35 each. I popped them in the uh, uh, microwave. He says, it was the best Thanksgiving they ever had. Still married? Yeah, they loved it. But but you know what? Now it's making me wonder because when's the last time you had a hungry man Thanksgiving dinner? Never. See? Yeah. So, oh yeah, that's right. You're the same one to give me a hard time, and you ruined me. By the way, I have not had a McDonald's rib sandwich because of you. You're welcome. But I think about it every day. I drive by McDonald's. <laughs> I think about it every day. I don't think about coffee. I don't think about the French fries. I can't wait for them to take the sign down because you know it's seasonal. Oh. What are we talking about today? Say, hey, where's Mike? <clears throat> no, that's right. He, I found out. I know he was <clears throat> going to be here. What are we going to talk about? So, well, let's go ahead and start. You know, it's the holiday season. Christmas is coming up. San Diego County owners, all three of the different branches are having Christmas parties. So oh, let's just wow. talk a little bit about them. Yeah, let it be known. Uh, everybody's invited. So the Inland Empire on December 10th is having their Christmas party. It's going to be at Thompson's Brewery in Riverside. There is a $12 fee, and they are asking for RSVPs to get that headcount. And uh, there's also the Orange County uh, gun owners, and they are having theirs on December 17th. And that one's going to be at Taps Brewery and Barrel Room. Uh, There is a fee of $25 per person. They are also asking for an RSVP. And locally here in San Diego, we are having ours on December 19th at the Bally High. There is no fee, no RSVP required. And if you like more information and details on any of the three, you can find a lot of all, all that information that you're going to need up on Instagram.com backslash gun owners radio. Looks to me like you shouldn't hang out with a brewery because you have to pay. <laughs> if you go out to the Bally High out there on the bay, it's free. Right over the water. Beautiful view. When was the last time you were there? Because they did a complete redo of it. Did they? Yeah, menu, inside. Oh, it's, yeah. it's been a while. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Live here in San Diego. I know. Never go to the tourist traps. What's, you know, like they say that, you know, the, the cobbler's children don't have shoes. Yeah, that's the right. The don't go visit all the pretty places. The mechanic's cars don't run. Right. Yeah. The right. whole nine yards. Who else we got? We got some guests, too. We do. We have a few. We have Rhonda Mary, and uh, she's going to talk to us about how to connect with the younger generation. She's a, she is a, a YouTuber, and she's a, a pretty pretty popular, and uh, and. She's kind of moving into the gun world. Uh, we also are going to have a special guest on the phone. Some of them might be a little bit familiar. It's going to be Mike. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Mike. He's on a little vacation, kind of a, a vacation, kind of not. He'll be calling in around 5 o'clock, and he's going to be going over gun violence and listening sessions here in San Diego. So we'll be discussing that in the 5 o'clock hour. And then we're also going to have Dane White. He's a newly elected mayor of Escondido, and he's going to talk to us about his results. Oh, that sounds like a fun show. Then we got Action Jackson. How you doing, Hot Rod? Uh, good. How are you? I'm fine. Hey, what's this? Uh, I seen you went to the range. Was that uh, this morning? Oh, that was yesterday, huh? Yeah. What range did you go to? Escondido. What'd you think of it? You like that range? Yeah. In fact, I had the shooting competition there. Oh, now for folks that may not know, this is an outdoor range, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, steel match. Okay. Steel match. So... What uh, division did you uh, sign up for? Little short, cute kids? Uh, no. No, you didn't get it that one? 
No. Yeah. How many other nine year olds were there? None. None. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was the name of the match? Do I have to ask the boss? Uh, Escondido Fishing Game. Fish? Oh, you shot fish? No. Oh. It, we're nowhere near the water. A ta- on the top of a mountain. Well, so that must have been the, like a sponsorship or just the name of the group? Probably. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what? Uh, what do, you're nine years old. What division were you in? Nine-year-olds? No. There's no division named that. So then what did, who did you, how did you shoot? How'd you do? Uh, good. In fact, all of my runs were under 60 seconds. Now I can see my, uh, match past my times. Really? Mm-hmm. Who else could, anybody else go as fast as you? There were some that went a little faster, some a little slower. Oh, right. But 60, I don't, I, she can do it. Huh? Can you do it in 60 seconds? Well, I've not seen the match. I've not seen the course fire. I Maybe. Was it? Was you know, it, Jackson and I never shot together. We need to fix that. How come? I don't know. You got to work on that. Uh, yep. So, how many r- rounds did you go through? What do you think? Just roughly. Uh, or a couple ba- hundred. A couple hundred? Five hundred? Yeah. Ten thousand? No, not that many. That'd be uh, way too expensive. <laughs> I see you're thinking, kid. Well, that's good. I like the way you roll. So, what'd you shoot? My SIG M17 chambered in 9 mil. Okay. So it worked out well for you? Yes. Hand wasn't tired when you were done? A uh, little bit? Yeah. Yeah. How many How many targets did you shoot? A lot. Uh, <laughs> how about many? About six stages worth. Wow. How long does a stage usually take? A minute or so? Yeah. Yeah. Now, is it a moving? Did you have to move and shoot, or did you go to the station and then shoot the the, the stationary target? What would you say? Um. Because I no. yeah, because I've seen videos of you running and shooting. Was it one of those kind of events? No, it's usually a stationary target. Gotcha. Okay, gotcha. All right. So you're pretty happy with how everything went. Mm-hmm. Who who cleaned your gun? Mom and Dad. All right. <laughs> Keep it up. Keep it up. I don't care what anybody tells you. It's always great to have other people do your work. It sure is. I know. You're seeing everybody that you're nine years old and we're going on 32. That's pretty cool. What's your next uh, What's your next meet? You mean match? Yeah, next match. Sorry. Excuse me. Uh, next Saturday, oh. it's uh, Paula. Okay. They get another outdoor uh, range. Yeah, but that's the one that's uh, moving. Oh, where are they going? Do you know? Let's move and shoot. Uh, You'll have to find out, huh? Because <laughs> if you like them, so they're just going to probably some other location in the county. Jackson will be moving as he's shooting. Oh, at that range. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought you said they were moving like their building was leaving and they're going down the road. Oh, so you're going to go run around about 180 miles an hour, huh? I wish. I see some videos of you. Truck and ride along with all your gear. Is that too much gear for you to run and shoot, or is it perfect? Maybe it is a little too much. Maybe. Yeah. But then you might, well, at least you sleep good at night. Yes. You know how to avoid using the Second Amendment fight by just aging out? Well, Rhonda Mary is back to talk to you about how to get the younger generations educated and engaged with their gun rights. She did a great talk at the Alternative Mass Media uh, Conference in Dallas this year, and we are going to dive right into that with her up next. Absolutely. But first, if you have legal matters that involve firearms, that you need to call California firearms lawyer John Dillon, especially if you have questions about the red flag laws, gun registration, gun transportation, or maybe you just need to know that your guns are California compliant. Call our trusted firearms attorney, John Dillon. John Dillon specializes in California gun laws. Call 760-642-7150, or you can visit his website at dillonslawgp.com. Hi, Alicia. Would you like to chat with Rhonda? I would love to. Okie dokie. Hi, Rhonda. Hey, y'all. How are you? We're doing well. How are you? Good. I'm doing pretty good. I can't complain. Glad you guys are having me back. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on with us. Thank you. 
All right. So we heard that you were recently on the show and uh, you talked about concealed carry courses for women. And I'm just curious, can you kind of just give us a quick intro and a recap for our listeners about that? Oh, okay. So, hey, y'all. I am Rhonda Mary. I'm a Second Amendment advocate and a political commentator. I recently released a uh, concealed carry style guide where I talk about some ways I've learned to basically conceal carry regardless of what I have on. So if I want to wear a nice dress, if I want to wear a nice skirt, if I want to go out for a night with my girls, finding ways to do that without having to leave my home without my firearm. When I first uh, got into the community and was learning more about the Second Amendment. Because it's heavily male dominated, I was learning from a lot of guys and they were trying to convince me, oh, just buy bigger jeans, just buy <laughs> bigger t shirts. And I'm convinced that, you know, we can get more women to carry if they feel like they can do it comfortably while maintaining their own unique style. And so that's why I have that guide over at rondamary.com. Wonderful, wonderful. And, and you know, and I, and I checked out your website or I checked out your um, your Instagram and everything uh, after we were on the show last last time. You had some great tips in there and I really appreciate those. And I'm glad that you're out there sharing that with with other women Thank because you. those things are, you know, those are things that, believe it or not, that, that kind of make a difference and kind of, you know, give some, women some freedom and, and to realize that they don't have to limit themselves or, or make, Correct. you know, so. Um, absolutely. So, absolutely. And, and I, so. How did you, you know, going back to when you presented at the Alternative Media Conference, um, how did that come about? So Cheryl Todd, who is absolutely awesome uh, over there in Arizona and is doing some really trailblazing things for the Second Amendment community and making connections and bringing people on board and all types of things. Uh, she invited me to that conference to speak and that was in Dallas, Texas, and I went, and it was a really, really great time. There was um, a lot of awesome people there, and, um, you know, the room was really receptive, so I enjoyed my time there. No, curious, was that a topic that you chose when you, because you, you talked about the younger generations, or was that something that you were invited and asked to speak on? I was actually invited and asked to speak on that, but it was very easy for me, if I do say so myself. <laughs> very natural. <laughs> hey, some people, some people have it, some don't. I mean, for just for example, Rhonda, here's something for you to work for. I do six hours of radio every Sunday. Oh my goodness! So there, I'll give you something to go. But you know what? When you love it, it's, it's easy. And you know what it is? It's talking to people like you. That have got mm -hmm. such a great story. Doesn't hurt to have great co hosts as well, especially that Action Jackson guy. Mm hmm. Yeah, he's, right. he's here rocking out. Well, I tell you, he just went to the range this morning. Yesterday. Or yesterday. Yesterday morning. Nine years old, pumped through a few hundred rounds of ammo. Oh, he, wow. Yeah. Tell her what you shoot. A uh, SIG M17 chambered in nine mil. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. <laughs> He's out here getting it. Yep, yep. I'll let you well, take it. Well, it definitely helps keeping the, keep the motivation going, having that young energy around, see? Right, see? right. See, gotta, <laughs> and you got to start them young. See, we got to start right. them young because we've kind of given up on that because I remember when I was a boy, I mean, I started with a BB gun and then a twenty two, and then, you know, worked my way up, train, 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 train. But today, you, you won't find hardly anybody doing that out in California. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And something, a concept that I've been thinking about lately, and I don't know if you guys want to go this deep into it, but I honestly believe that the public school system is a part of how we are teaching children about self-defense in general. Mm -hmm. If you really think about it, it kind of mimics the, the state or the state having a monopoly on violence, as some people call it, because You'll have these kids that's bullied in schools and they're told, don't hit back, don't fight back, go tell the teacher. And a lot of times when they tell the teacher, you know, the teacher may take forever to respond if they respond at all. And then once the child finally decides to stand up for themselves, they're suspended just like the bully. 
I mean, if you look at that, that's very similar to what you see in some of these cities that uh, work against our Second Amendment rights, saying, hey, if somebody breaks in, if somebody tries to rob you, if somebody tries to hurt you, call the police. The police take forever to show up if they do show up in some city um, that are heavy populated, you know, and then you will be lucky depending on the city you're in if you get somebody that will actually fight on your behalf. I mean, in some instances, they're even make, making the victims look like the bad guys for wanting justice. So it's definitely, I, I fully believe that we have to start implementing these principles early into these children that you have a right to defend yourself. You have a right to stand up for yourself. It's not okay for people to feel like they can hit you, they can bully you, and really making sure that we're standing on the side of our children when they are being abused, bullied, <laughs> and making sure we're sorting those things out appropriately, not just turning a blind eye to it, because I believe that, like I said again, that kind of sets them up, right, to go, once they finish school, to go right into the system of, oh, turn all over your, turn all of your cares and worries right over to the police. They'll handle it. You don't have any autonomy, sovereignty. It's not your problem. It's theirs. Which is the farthest thing from the truth, because I haven't read the Bill of Rights lately, but I didn't see an age group on the second. I don't know. You might have Absolutely. seen. Absolutely. So. no. no. Yeah, but see now, but you know, I totally, totally, one hundred percent agree with you. It seems to me like there's a greater, greater plan going on in the country than that than we're than we're willing to admit to. There are people who know that what it, what it is, and to me, it's just it's just government control. Absolutely, that's right. exactly what it is. Yeah, and if we don't wake up. And what, what's what's that old adage about you can put a frog in a pot of water, and as you turn the heat oh, on, right. then finally it dies, but it never realized the problem it was in until it was too late. Right. They're being indoctrinated young and being yeah. taught a mindset. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Not to fight back. Mm-hmm. I just heard mm-hmm. read a report the other day, and it had nothing to do with cars, but I read this report what? the other day. I know. I couldn't believe it either. But 97% of the professors... In all the colleges, not just Harvard and Yale, are hardcore liberal. That's it? That's it. I would have thought it was much higher. Yeah. Wait, yeah. what's the percentage? About 90, 98, 90, it's 97, 98%. That's pretty high. <laughs> I think it's pretty high, too. And and <laughs> what they're doing is they're all on the same. And the biggest problem they were talking about is tenure. When you give a, a, a teacher tenure, mm-hmm. They don't even care. This one lady came out and she just says she's not going to take, not going to make the kids take tests. There's not going to be a final, mm-hmm. and you're all going to get an A. Is that a social experiment? No, that's no? just the way that she felt that, that that they didn't need to have oh. to take a test and they didn't need to do a final, mm-hmm. and all they needed to do was show up. I don't even know if that was a criteria. So of course the whole school system's up in arms. We can't do anything with her because she has tenure. So yeah, so I I'm right there with you, girl, and I'm sure you go way deeper than that. But uh, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I could have y'all here for hours. <laughs> <laughs> do you do a podcast? Yes, every week Tuesdays at seven thirty Central, eight thirty Eastern on my YouTube channel, Rhonda Mary. All right. So how long do you go? Because I got a feeling if somebody lets you go, they're not, they're not <laughs> going to bed that night. About an hour and a half. About an hour and a half. So that's not too bad. You you sound like a deep thinker. Where do where do you get your best thoughts? Oh, we like I get inspiration from other places. Like I see things that that spark. So it may be TV. It may be Twitter. (laughs) I really like Twitter here as of late. Um, It may be a book. Um, and sometimes just thinking on certain concepts, like really sitting with them and thinking about how I feel about them and challenging myself even sometimes to go deeper. Right. No, I, 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 otherwise life's boring, right? Well, 
I don't know. I don't know. They say ignorance is bliss. That's what I hear. I could be chilling, you know, just ignoring everything that's going on. <laughs> well, there there is that too, but that's still a better place to be than reality sometimes. But now we're going psychological on each other. Orange County Gun Owners is dedicated to preserving and restoring Orange County self-defense rights. And if you live in Orange County and want to help defend and restore the Second Amendment, you need to join. OCGunOwners.com slash join. Orange County Gun Owners is more than supporting the lawsuits for the Second Amendment. They have developed an effective infrastructure that focuses on local outreach and activism. Volunteer at a shooting social at a gun shop and tabletop. And you can help more pro-gun local officials get elected. Become a member today. OCGunOwners.com slash join. All right. Who we got back? Rhonda. Fantastic. Rhonda's with us. Rhonda Mary. That's, a, pr- that's a pretty name. And I even think you got a <laughs> YouTube, right? Thank you. So it's Rhonda Mary, YouTube, then Rhonda Mary? Uh, Ro- it's Rhonda Mary on YouTube. You can go to RhondaMary.com, and it has all of my links to Twitter, Facebook, okay. um, YouTube, Instagram. And you only have to stay up for an hour and a half. <laughs> I bet <laughs> I can hit pause. I bet I can hit pause at least once or twice, right? Only for an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we were kind of talking a little bit about – I don't know, you could probably say a little conspiracy going on within the school systems. But what do you think? Because you're you're way younger than I am, see, so now the job's on you. I <laughs> I screwed it up totally, so I didn't fix nothing. So now the ball's in your court. Because your generation is gonna have to fix this. So what right. do you think what do you think the fix is? So one thing that I noticed um is that engaging with a lot of people that have been in the second amendment community and in it for so long that sometimes you just get so used to prepackaged talking points. Right. So my God gave it right, you know, take it from my cold dead hands <laughs> and like all these other things that are said. And I think that a key to really building with younger generations is making sure that we are making connections. So making personal connections with people and really seeing what their concerns is about the Second Amendment. So I tell this quick little um, story that I told while I was at the event down in um, Texas is that I was at a um, a recycling, like a recycling, uh, uh, not an event, well, kind of like an event, but um, like, like a community thing. Like a, semi- like a I, seminar I, of types? No, it was like like a cleanup. Type oh, of okay, thing. okay. Yeah. yeah. And I overheard this young lady, and I, I wasn't familiar with her, and I overheard her just saying, uh, oh, I just, you know, I don't like guns, and I just hope that they, you know, get rid of the guns, and I just think they're so awful. And so I'm just listening to her have this conversation with another person. And eventually, you know, I politely interjected, and I just asked her, I said, if, when you say, like, get rid of the guns, like, what do you actually mean by that? Like, what would that look like? And I saw her, you know, she kind of paused and took a second, and she was like, I mean, I guess they would, like, have to come get them from people. And I said, hmm, Mm. how do you think that would look in your neighborhood? Like, how do you think that would smooth over? Do you think people would take kindly to that? Or do you think that would make your neighborhood more dangerous? Or do you think that would be chaotic? And she thought about it for a second. And then she was processing this. I said, so what is your real concern with guns? Like, like, what are your fears or problems about them? And she started to tell me how her child's father, the child would spend a lot of time at his home and that the father owned a firearm and she didn't feel like it was a safe environment for her son. And she really had concerns for his safety. I said, have you ever talked to your son about gun safety? She said, no. I said, so you have these concerns, but you never took the time to teach him the do's and the don'ts, you know, don't touch the firearm when you're over there. You know, this is what a firearm is for. This could be the consequences. If you ever hurt somebody with a firearm, you never had any of these conversations. She was like, no. 
I said, I think that will be a good place to start if you actually have concerns about it. Um, because I feel like that can immediately impact the safety of your child. She told me that she never thought about it this like this before. Um, and she thanked me after the conversation. Now, people listening might think that this is the wildest thing they ever heard. Like, oh, my goodness, I can't believe that she never even thought about something that seems so simple to us. But the fact that the matter is, is that you have a lot of people that are being programmed and being propagandized to have opinions on things that they really haven't fit with. They really haven't taken the time to challenge themselves on, like I talked about a little bit before the break, challenge themselves on and really see and get down to the bottom of why they feel the way they feel about these issues. A lot of times they're just repeating what they heard on TV, what they heard from mainstream media, what they heard being taught in their schools. They haven't taken a personal, uh, a personal look at how these issues would impact them in their everyday right now life. It's always about oh, what the government could do, what could happen, what I would like to see happen instead of the steps that they could do right now to protect and make their loved ones safer. And so after that conversation with her, you know, she really thanked me. She was like, I've never thought about it in this way. And what I won't really won't, to hit people with about this conversation is the fact that I never made that conversation about me. I mean, she could probably presume my opinion on guns, but I never said, I never said anything about me, how I felt about guns, my rights, my nothing in that conversation. I made it all about her, all about her concerns. And I used that to shape the conversation in a way that she could take these things on as a part of herself so as you, opposed to outside of herself. So you were looking for an aha moment for her. Correct. Absolutely. And I think that if more people would go into it with that type of thinking, as opposed to, let me say these hard hitting talking points, I'm going to own the lid. You know, and really it's not about that. It's about making connections. It's about networking. It's about spreading understanding and truth. It's about easing concerns because ultimately the way this thing goes is going to affect all of us. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, owning people or trying to prove a point or trying to get the last word is not necessarily a winning strategy. We really want to open people's minds and hearts to these ideas and these concepts so we can get them on our team and we can spread the message. So, Alicia, let me ask you a question, because mm-hmm. it seems to me like and it's just phenomenal, phenomenal what Rhonda is doing. Mm-hmm. But don't you find people that are really true, you know, second amendment gun ownership, do that kind of same thing. Like if you overhear a conversation, I mean, I have a feeling you would walk up and sit, maybe not have the same dialogue, but we seem to get our, want to put our nose in somebody's business when we know what they're thinking is wrong. Well, there's so much misinformation out there and, and a lot of, and like the woman that you spoke to, Rhonda, I bet you really, like you had said, she didn't really she just spouted what she had heard and she really i'm sure had little to no understanding of what any of it really even meant um and and she had likely no knowledge of what she feared and that there is the foundation of a lot of that fear and so i you know we all have different talents we all have different strengths and i love rhonda's approach to this and it really kind of opens. i think hearing your story can really help people to understand and open their eyes to the different ways that we can approach people sometimes everybody goes you know, we think, you know, when, when all that you have is a hammer, you think everything's a nail and there's not always, right. there's not always one approach to every situation. And so, you know, and I, I know I, I do my best to, to share, like they was starting to, to speak to, to share and to teach and to help people to understand. And just like you've done, there's, there's ways to reach people and you just got to kind of, you just kind of have to you know read your audience, know the people and, right. and find a way to reach them in a way that's effective because you can't bash or push people into what what you want them to do and you you just have to inform and teach and and i love how you said you you got her thinking you didn't just speak to her like you know like media and other places do you got her thinking and and helped her to to come to a realization on her own absolutely 
Now you guys are best of friends, go to coffee every third Thursday. <laughs> no, um, that was actually like a temporary, like, and, and I didn't think about how important that moment was to much later. And so now I don't, I don't even have any contact with her. Um, but I wish I did so I could follow up and, <laughs> and, uh, see how she's doing. Really she might be at the see range. How she's doing. See how many different. Absolutely. Hey, by the way, not to change the subject, Action Jackson. Did you have a, a joke for this young lady? Yeah, I went Black Friday shopping to find some camouflage pants, but I couldn't find any. Arr, arr, arr. Get it? Uh, Black wait. What? Because they're camouflage? There you <laughs> go. <laughs> if, if Brendan was in here, he'd give you the old bum, 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 bum. bum. Oh, my goodness. I just have to throw that in a little levity here because, ah, he found it. Because we got the jokester. And he's full of jokes, aren't you? Yep. Yeah. So what's in the future? What do you got coming up next? Vice President, Senate, House of Representatives? Speaker of the House. Speaker of the House. What are you doing? Come on, girl. Let's get going. Why people keep trying to push me into <laughs> well, politics? Why do you – okay, when you get this radio show, I want you to sit in your room, close all the doors, and just listen to yourself. And that oh is why – no, it, it it has everything to do – well, I can tell you because I'm old. It has everything to do with you're passionate, you're truthful, and you make people think. And that's a politician we haven't had yet. And if you make it to the White House, you because I gave you those three words, I'm coming for dinner. Oh, yeah, of course. Absolutely. I hear they got a great chef up there. I really do. <laughs> we would definitely have to make that happen. So you got any speaking engagements? Have you got any? Uh, come on, girl. You need a PR person. Uh, I believe I'm going to be going to Arizona in uh, February for their second amendment rally that's mm. going to be the most um that's going to be the soonest thing coming up uh hopefully next year i i don't know we'll we'll see what comes but right now i'm just really just trying to continue building my social media working on my like outreach networking and really just trying to get this message out and make sure that i'm adding you know more value or I should say like a different value to it. all of the great things a lot of people in the second amendment community are already doing just mm -hmm. basically playing my part so well it's it you know it takes an army you know one person Absolutely. I, mean, I mean it'd be nice to think one person could do it but you know you really can't and you need that that group attitude and I'm starting to think that you know we're well Alicia correct me if I'm wrong we're starting to interview more younger folks. Not saying that you're old, because you're not, but I'm just saying. Thanks, Dave. I thought you'd appreciate that. Is that a backhanded comment? I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, but don't you think that more and more, you know, uh, uh, what are you, an X, X gen, or whatever the heck you are? How old are you? We used to ask you how old you were, but we're not, we don't, we're not allowed to do that. So I thought I was going with it. Just her. don't ask her her weight. I think her age is okay. I'm not asking anybody. <laughs> Well, you know, oh, y'all over in on the West Coast. You know, in the South, we don't do either one of those. Oh, good. I feel much, <laughs> much better. Yeah, you just made me absolutely you know, hungry. We don't do either one of those. <laughs> you made me instantly hungry. Hey, how do people follow you around on all those those fun social media sites? So I am on Twitter and Facebook. I am Rhonda Mary. On Instagram, Rhonda underscore Mary. YouTube, Rhonda Mary. I mean, type in Rhonda Mary, you'll find me. Yeah, I but the easiest way is to go to RhondaMary.com, and you can see everything. My bio, you can see about my weekly show, where to find me on these various social media platforms. And when are you on the uh, podcast? Tuesday. This coming up Tuesday, 7.30 Central, 8.30 p.m., yeah. 8.30 E. What's the topic? Ah, a mixed box and box so, of nuts. Oh, we it's so much going on. That's what I said. A mixed box <laughs> of nuts. Little Empire gun owners strive to be uh, the ounce of prevention in that fight for your 
gun rights. And how do they do it? They'll do it by fundraising and getting local pro gun candidates elected. How do you, how can you help become a member today? Go to iegunowners.com slash join and join the growing number of responsible gun owners stepping up to defend our second amendment right. That's iegunowners.com slash join. All right, Alicia, I'm going to throw this young lady uh, at you. <laughs> hey, Rhonda. Hey. Hey, hey. So I just, so kind of going back to the topic of, you know, kind of talking about youth and then the, and, and the gun culture and kind of marrying the the younger with the older generations and kind of tying together. Are there any organiz- organizations or groups that you feel that are out there that kind of have this as their mission or are kind of working to help achieve or make this connection that you feel are doing it in a proper, in a, in a good and successful proper way? Um, yes. Antonia Okafer over at, um, it's like Empower, Empower 2A. She works with Gun Owners of America and, um, she does a lot of great work and then she's having some things that are going to be coming up next year. And I don't want to go like too deep into it because she's still working on some things. But uh, hopefully I will be working with her as well, a lot of other ladies across the country to make sure we are reaching women um, and giving women resources and a voice in how they are learning about and engaging in the Second Amendment. So she is someone that um, is really great. Of course, um, Mosh Teray with Black Guns Matter. Um, he is really great in the Second Amendment with what he does and reaching younger demographics, reaching, you know, urban and inner city demographics. Um, Kevin Dixie was no other choice. Like, these three people are people that I really look up to. He has the No Other Choice organization. He works with young boys as well as he has his train and learn coming up, which is really great because it gives a chance for instructors, activists, advocates. I mean, just everybody across the Second Amendment community to come together, train together, learn together, learn how to work with these different um, corporations or organizations, making sure we're really understanding that we, we have the training part down. So, you know, doing everything properly and safely, but also how we're reaching out to people, networking, getting the message out, working with these different companies to expand the message. So those are three people that just come to my mind right off top that have been so extremely like helpful and supportive of me. So Rhonda, I'm, yes. old, I'm older. I was trying to uh, find and locate and follow those three as you gave them. I got the first two and I was still okay. typing, trying to catch the third. <laughs> what was the name uh, of the third one that you gave? Um, the third one is Kevin Dixie and he is, let me see. Um, his Instagram, let me find it real quick. The real underscore N O C. Found him. Thank you. And that's Kevin Dixie. You notice I didn't ask. I'll get it to you later. <laughs> Cause she's going to share it with me. <laughs> but these are three people that have not only been super influential to me, but have just been so helpful. And I real and when I really say, have their heart in this movement and trying to expand and have no problem reaching and bringing other people in. And so I I definitely like off top, those are the people that I want to highlight. And, you know, I already mentioned, you know, Cheryl Todd and the work that she does. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's other people that have been influential. The DC project has been very helpful to me. Um, so, you know, it, it's a lot of people doing good work out here. Love it. Well, it takes it takes an army, as the old saying goes. Mm-hmm. You know, one, yeah. person, one person can't do it alone, no matter what Rhonda tells you. <laughs> well, she's trying. <laughs> she's trying. You know, some people like to call me superwoman, but, <laughs> you know, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> you know what? Hey, you know what, girl? I'd take it because I've had things called to me, which I don't want, but. That was one I would keep. I would definitely make a t-shirt. I would make a t-shirt. That's what I would do. So talk to me about this. Because 
we were talking about it before we went on air. And, you know, recommendations uh, for connecting with your, your audience. Now, is that just the story or how to get on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram? Wait, I didn't understand the question. Ask me one more time. <laughs> it was recommendations for connecting with young audiences. And I'm thinking, well, would that be on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram? Because I could bump my, I'd like to bump up my audience, but that's not what the question is. Oh, are you on okay. Instagram? Yeah. Are you on, you are? I am. Ooh. See, so, I told you I need well, help, but that wasn't, that's not the question you wanted. You were talking about the actual, you know, interacting and connecting with the younger audience. So what I would say now about the younger audience is you have to find out how they're already communicating and figure out how your message could fit into that. Something that's really popular now is the um, short format videos. So the reels, which you can use that same content on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. If you can do something or say something in 30 to 60 seconds that's funny and informative, you can really grow your audience. And young people, unfortunately, our attention spans are getting shorter and shorter. However, if you know that, <laughs> you can use it to your benefit. So if you can teach something, or resonate with people or say something funny in 30 to 60 seconds and you're doing that consistently, you will see your outreach grow with your younger demographic. And a lot of people don't realize 60 seconds to some people could be an hour. Oh, goodness. And then that there's terrible. people like you that could <laughs> knock out enough 60 seconds to choke a horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... It's, you know, I mean, in some ways, I I see what's happening, you know, with what's happening with our intent, attention spans. And I, I really, <laughs> I have concerns about how that's going to affect us five to 10 years from now. But mm -hmm. I mean, hey, maybe we mix in a little bit of those techniques to, to reach those people where they are. Well, consistency has a lot to do with it. Oh, just, yes. just like you said, if you're doing a 60 second spot, even if it was like once a day mm -hmm. and people got used to seeing you at two o'clock every day, you know, and it just depends on what, like you said, it depends on the delivery, depends on the message. But it's interesting because remember, well, you weren't that old, but back in the day when all this craziness started, everybody wanted to do really long YouTubes and really long videos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't, they didn't understand why their numbers were dropping because mm -hmm. yeah, you could only watch so much of one thing and then you just dump it. I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay. I have to ask since you're in the younger generation, are you listening to, or do you care about the reputation of TikTok? <sighs> I want to care. I want to care uh -huh. and I know, and because I know I should do better, but then when I see all the potential for the people that I can reach on TikTok, it's just a really, it's just a really interesting conundrum. Yeah, it's a hard, you know, it's, it's a hard balance. So, it's a hard balance. So much potential on TikTok. There's so much potential to reach so many people mm -hmm. that. It's like you don't want to not do TikTok, but then just knowing the truth of, you know, the ownership of it and concerns about propaganda and safe, uh, you know, safety, uh, privacy, I mean, uh, issues and things like that. Especially that if you're, there. especially if you're going to be in the public, public's eye. Right. And the problem is, how do you get? to be in the public's eye. You have to be on platforms right. like TikTok. You have to be seen. You it, have to get right. your message out there. There you go. I know. I know. It's it's one of the best ways to get people onto something, whether they want to be on it or not. You know? Right. Right. And I think they know that. <laughs> you think? I think they know that. Hey, I, we're pretty smart, but I think there's a few people a little higher up the ladder smarter than us. Hey, man, it's been bl a blast talking to you. Say goodbye, Alicia. You're on. We'll catch you next time. Well, Inland Empire Gun Owners strives to be 
the ounce of prevention in the fight for your local gun rights. How do they do it? They do it by fundraising and getting local pro-gun candidates elected. Become a member today. Go to iegunowners.com slash join and join the growing number of responsible gun owners stepping up to defend our Second Amendment rights. That's iegunowners.com slash join. All right. Michael, are you out there? What's up, Dave? I don't know, man. I've been looking all over the place for you. For an hour, I don't know where you were. <laughs> I'm hiding in the basement. All right. You, you sound pretty good down there. Hey, Action Jackson, what do you think? I think you sounding pretty good. Yeah, he's, but we're not gonna you're not gonna lose your job, so don't worry about it. Because he sounds deeper now than he was before. So <laughs> so far, if you missed the first hour, it was awesome. Rhonda, you know, Mary good. took it out of the park. Yeah. yeah. Good. That's awesome. Oh wait. Well, wait, I wait, wish wait, I wait. wish I had We got an action oh, Jackson yeah. joke for you. Oh, far away. Uh, actually two. Oh mm. my goodness. Double hitter. Okay, go for it. So I went Black Friday shopping, and I went to find some camouflage pants, but but I couldn't find any. <laughs> hey oh Sorry. Okay, what's the second one? The second one is, where do ducks put their money? On I don't their, know. Where do, duck, on where their, do ducks put their money? <laughs> on their bill. Hey. Hey. Okay, I said I think you. I was sensing that you're going to start off with some bad news, so I thought a couple of jokes would help. <clears throat> Better have a couple of jokes to soften the blow. That's what I was yeah, talking I mean, about. I don't know if it's bad in the sense that, like, oh my gosh, the sky's falling, but it's uh, it's just more ridiculousness by the local government this time, and this is led by your county board of supervisors, which, of course, uh, Nathan Fletcher is is you know the the main guy in charge of all this. Mm. Um, what they're doing is, first off, you know, they're, three of them are anti-gun. They're not neutral. They're not, you know, you know, uh, pro-Second Amendment or whatever. They're anti-gun. Mm -hmm. uh, two of them, Jim Desmond and Joel Anderson, are, are pro. So the three of them already have an agenda <clears throat> to further restrict your ability to, to, to keep and bear arms. What they've done is they've hired a uh, consulting agency, and they're having these listening meetings and basically they they want to solve the problem of gun violence what that means is what the reality is is this is a, a chance for every anti-gun person to go to these community meetings and you know talk about how horrible guns are and how horrible gun owners are and how we need to ban them or restrict them or whatever throw out all these horrible ideas and then they're going to use that for as ammo to you know further some kind of restriction or, or you know, an, an already existing agenda. So what we need people to do is we need them to, uh, if you're not a, if you're not already following San Diego County gun owners, you need to get on our email list because we're listing where and when these listening uh, uh, meetings are. And we need you to go down there and say, Hey, look, I'm a sane train law abiding gun owner. You know, I'm against any, uh, any kind of regulation that would, uh, you know, further restrict my ability to defend myself. You need to concentrate on criminals, do all the things, say all the things that we already know they, they need to hear and take their ammo away from them. Would you guys consider putting, I know it sounds crazy, but sometimes it's easier to read a script. Would you have those questions that would, would get the impact across like on the website at yeah, I mean, San, San Diego County I mean, Gun Owners? We could have that, but it, but it's it's we need we don't need one person to come read one script. No, we no, need no, no, no. Hundreds of you. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, if you had a and say, look, I'm against this thing, right. you know. But if you had a script, because the last thing you want them to do is go down and say the wrong thing, or, or be a, a belligerent, or or just not get their facts straight, or start spewing. You know, it's kind of like saying, you know, just mix and match these guys right here, and you'll be fine. I just, what I'm saying though, is we need hundreds of people. Right. We can't produce hundreds of scripts or hundreds of talking points. We need people to be able to sit down, articulate, uh, their, their message, you right. know, the way that we've talked about it on gun owners radio, the way we talk about it at all the gun meetings and everything. We, this is it. Like, this is, you know, this is the time to say, Hey, you know what? All the, all the, you know, all the reasonable things that we've heard from San Diego County gun owners, in Orange County and Inland Empire and gun owners radio. 
now is the time for me to write a few sentences down, mm-hmm. go down there and say, hey, look, this is why this is important to me. I need to be able to defend myself. I'm not a criminal. You're blaming me for the actions of criminals. So, I mean, we need hundreds of people to participate. I just there isn't really a functional way for me to come up with. 500 talking no, 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 no. I wasn't saying that. Script, you know? I was just going to, no, I was just saying one script, maybe five, ten questions or, or statements, and then people could pick whatever they want if they have any difficulty realizing what the message is you're trying to get out. Because you want them to be edu- you know, a good, intelligent statement, not something that they'll just disregard. That's all. So best thing to do is, of course, like I said, get on our email list. Uh, if, you're on, if you're on our email list, look at last Thursday's email. Every Thursday we send out an email. I did an interview on KUSI where I talked about why this is bad. So the best thing to do, if you absolutely have no idea what wow, to say. That's even better. Um, watch the interview and say, hey, you know what? That, that statement that Mike said on KUSI about this, right. I like that. I'm going to say something similar to that. Perfect. Um, you know what I mean? That was probably the best thing to do. But yeah. we need people who are engaged to, you know, tell tell this consulting group that we do not want the county um, to do any more restrictive gun laws. We do not want the county to no. focus on, you know, um, gun violence. But we need them to focus on criminals. We need to focus on career uh, violent criminals, not gun owners, which is what they're focusing on with this listening tour. So how long um, before? Already, how long before you think you'll have dates? Oh, I have dates now. Oh, you got yep. dates now? I can give them right now. Yeah, we have December 5th at 530 uh, down in Chula Vista at the Civic Center Branch Library. Uh, December 7th, 6 p.m. is going to be at One Safe Place in San Marcos. And then December 15th at 6 p.m. is going to be at the Ronald Reagan Community Center in El Cajon. There you go. The and you can, there is some, if you do a little extra research, mm-hmm. you can Zoom and... Uh, figure out how to uh, call in basically. Um, but what we need you to do is show up. No, this you're the absolutely amendment. right. It's that important. All right. So is this where, uh, yeah. so you can make, is there a time limit as to how many, you know, making the comments and are they limiting how many people will they allow to, to speak? So it's not a county board meeting. Oh. So I'm not sure how they're going to run each. It's just a, an independent group that's doing like research. Oh, it's an independent so sure. group. Oh, mm-hmm. Okay, I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah, they hired this consulting group to to uh, try to put together an anti-gun agenda. That, that's essentially what they did. They hired a consulting group to put together an anti-gun agenda. Well, who paid for that? So the hmm. count your tax money at work should come out. Of Isn't that Fletcher. ridiculous? It should come out of Fletcher's pocket. He's got the money. <laughs> so anyway so that's what we're talking about so please 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 check out our email um check out our website get on our email list go to san diego county gun and sign up sign up to become a member so you automatically get these uh thursday emails right. and attend go down there and attend if you even if you know if they're having it in chula vista and you don't live in chula vista go to chula vista it doesn't matter where you live you know, if you go to one, go to two. You go to two, go to three. But go and tell them, hey, we are not going to stand for this. This is ridiculous. Um, what you're attempting to do is wrong. Uh, don't blame career criminals on, you know, my ability to own a firearm so I can defend myself. Yeah, with, without without a shadow of a doubt. Hey, before yeah. we go to break, I'm just going to throw this at you. What do you think of oh. the, the, the police chief of New York that they're just going to mm-hmm. arbitrarily go out and take the homeless off the street? Just take uh, them. I, that's it's t- I don't know what, what are they going to do with them. <laughs> well, I, I, they don't know what they're going to do with them because they never never think that far out. But they're going to take them off the street if they if they're not coherent and take them away and they haven't figured out where to put them yet. Yeah, yeah. I mean they I don't know they're, that's such a big uh, <laughs> issue. I, I think that if if you have public property, um, you know you can't. I was I just went downtown to do an interview. Actually, it's first time I've been in downtown San Diego in ah. years. Ah. And I went to downtown San Diego, and oh my gosh, it's like it's like Beirut down there. It, the streets are lined with tents. Yeah, I you know, know, and this is they're on like this, these are sidewalks. This is city property. You know, I need a I need a permit to go to a campground, let alone you know camp on a sidewalk. I know. So something has to be done. I don't know what they're gonna, what they're going to do. Ship them to somewhere and put them somewhere and get them help. But they they also need we also need to realize that the majority of the folks these aren't people that need a hand up 
are getting a hand up. There are plenty of programs for I them. Agree. You know, keep them funded. You know, they're doing a great job. But the folks you're seeing downtown that are destroying the city um, are either, uh, you know, have mental health issues because they've been on drugs or they've been on drugs so they have mental health issues. Well, and you, know? you hit it right on the head. The hand up where that homeless person ended up being homeless, either due to finances, divorce, he lost his job, you know, whatever. If somebody comes and helps him, he's up and he's on the road, and, and now we have one less guy. But these poor folks, like you mentioned, that are, you know, having mental issues, they're not going anywhere. They're going to stay right there for as long as they possibly can. So that's the ones, and those are the ones doing all the crime because the, all the other ones just packed up and left. Hey, you're going to stay for well, you're going to stay for another segment. That's it for me. But it's for but it drives me crazy when Todd people like like Mayor Todd Gloria go goes on and says, "Hey, we need to help these people who yeah. need a hand up, whatever." Blah blah blah. That's not what we're talking about. Right. We're talking about the people with severe mental health issues, right. the drug addicts that are littering downtown San Diego, right. littering. And I don't mean littering, and I mean they are all over downtown San Diego. Oh, I, I, so, I got anyway. I got friends leaving. You know, the younger gent, the people that all moved downtown thinking it was a cool place to live, they're all right. leaving. They're getting out of Dodge because it's it's just so bad. And it's just total eyesore, but, you know. All right, so I you're you're it. done with us? I'm done with you guys. I'm done with you guys. <laughs> all right. What do you think, Action Jackson? I hope he's never done. I hope oh. he's not. <laughs> oh, See? That's kind of sweet. Made you feel bad now, you big bully. <laughs> no, no, I feel kind of bad. All right, All we're right, gonna well, Alicia, Action Jackson, Dave. I'll see you guys next Sunday. I'll be in studio and uh, hugs all around with bells on. All right, hey, a lot of companies are frustrated with their websites. It looks old, it's out of date, and it's not getting customers. Sage Tree gets it since 2005. Sage Tree has been helping companies with websites that look great, work great, and get leads. So stop being frustrated. By your website. They get one that you're going to be proud to share. Contact Sage Tree today to get a website that makes the phone ring. Getting started is real easy. Call 866 728 9100. That's 866 728 9100. Get your website today and stop being frustrated. All right. Well, we were hoping Dane White was going to call in. He won the, what did he, uh, mayor of Escondido. So he's not called in yet, and we've been trying to check him out. But in the meantime, what's going on? I'm bouncing it off you, girl. He's on the line. Oh, oh that you're saved. Saved by the, by the Dane. Saved by Mr. White. How you doing, sir? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Sorry about that. Oh, no, that's okay. We were just thinking, okay, we got to tap dance for 15 minutes. Let's see what we're going to do. But now, hey, congratulations. Thank you very much. Hard fought battle. Oh my gosh, the hardest battle of my life. <laughs> um, you know, we started 15 months ago, and I basically didn't work for a year. You know, I did, I took two jobs that basically kept our finances afloat to do this wow. full time. And yeah, it was uh, it was a lot more than I anticipated, but obviously it was worth it. Yeah, and not only that, now you're gonna really come back at them, make you go through all exactly. that work. <laughs> I'll make this worthwhile. Trust me. The people that didn't vote for me, I'm, no, I'm only kidding. Um, <laughs> no, it's funny. People keep saying, well, now the real work starts. And it's like, yeah, but at least I get a paycheck for this work. Yeah, yeah. I paid for the last year. And I think your hours are not going to be quite as long, and, and you're not going to have to walk <laughs> as far. Yeah, exactly. So for folks that maybe don't live in the Escondido area, uh, why don't you kind of give us a little synopsis of your of your last year? Yeah. Um, how in depth do you want me to go? Because there was a lot that happened. Well, why don't you do the highlights? And because is he on more for more than one segment, or, or is he on for one, two? Uh, two, two. Okay, two. so you got two segments. One of them could be just kind of the highlights of your journey, and then the next one, you can tell us what you're going to do to Escondido, uh, in, as as you move forward. Yeah. So we started in September of last year was when we made the announcement and i started by calling everybody in the city who i thought might run who kind of would have been next in line and nobody was interested and it was kind of worrying me because somebody had to challenge paul um so i announced 
and in the first week raised ten thousand dollars so we thought man this is a good sign yeah. um shortly after i announced though i had a group of individuals uh, a donor a council member and then uh the former mayor actually called me into a meeting and said uh you're gonna step aside because the former mayor is gonna run again and um uh, you know i only had one question what are you going to do different now that you didn't do four years ago that cost you your seat and he said absolutely nothing i'm going to do nothing different and i said i, I don't accept that it's not going to work um wow. in a city that's moved you know another six points to the democrats we need somebody new and and so i kept going and then uh, eventually got the republican party endorsement and then after that another republican filed papers and actually got their name on the ballot which was uh stressful for about three weeks and then she kindly uh, bowed out at the last second on the last day. So, um, yeah, that was that was interesting. <clears throat> and it wasn't until that point where people were really willing to get involved and, and help us out financially. And, and over that year, we were able to raise uh, about one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars and uh, do everything we needed to do. You did it with one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. I did. Yes. Well, wow. you're almost out there with that truck driver that did it for what? Two hundred and seventy five dollars. Yeah, no, that guy's got me beat. That guy definitely has <laughs> me that, beat. But uh, wouldn't you love like a box of donuts? Yeah. Wouldn't you love to know what his his campaign people were all doing? Man, I got to hire these guys. Hell, the salaries well, were more what, than that. What's fascinating is so I had and my campaign manager, Ryan Gardner, he's uh, I believe he's 23 or 24. He came to me when he was 17 for my first run for school board what? and asked if he could run my campaign, and we won. And then we won again in 2020, and uh, I had people tell me, you know, I don't know who Ryan is, and historically we donate, you know, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000, and we're not going to until you hire somebody else. And I had to say no because, A, I couldn't afford somebody else, <laughs> and, B, I don't think people quite realize to what extent – Ryan and I went to to make this thing happen. I mean, it was night and day for a year. Wow. Did you share that story with him? Oh yeah, yeah. Because I mean, that's oh yeah. But you know, it, when you think, you know, the teenagers are gone and we've lost them completely, you'll get a couple diamond in the roughs like like Ryan. That's amazing. That's a oh, great yeah. story. No, what's incredible is so he ran my race. He flipped control of our elementary school board here in Escondido. He won the two seats on my high school board, both with over 70%. And then he flipped the Palomar College board, all single-handedly. So did you ask, what got, was, did he go to school for, is there a school for this? No. no. Uh, so anyway. he's, he's, a, <laughs> he's a bright young man. Uh, he went to uh, one of the UCs, I believe, studied mm -hmm. political science, worked in the state senate. So he's, he's, been, uh, he's been doing this for quite some time. Quite some Quite time. Quite some time. He's 17 yeah, years old. Years. Yeah, yeah, he's an old pro now. He's taking <laughs> Sundays off and going golfing. <laughs> Got a son who's 24. He better step it up. <laughs> I wasn't wow. going to bring that up, not in the least. <laughs> so you used to have a business, or do you still have it? And if somebody keeping it running for you. Yeah, so here's what happened. Um, about that time, September, when we announced, I was in the middle of acquiring another hardwood flooring company, one that's been established in the county for about 30 years. And when December rolled around, it was becoming increasingly clear that uh, there were some inconsistencies in the business I just wasn't comfortable with. And at the same time, it was like, okay, the the amount of time it's going to take to run for mayor, I could tell just you just couldn't try and start a business and run for mayor and so i chose to run for mayor and so at that time i kind of put my business aside and like i said i took on two flooring jobs over the last year to keep us afloat um but after december i really didn't work a whole lot wow so you bet went back to putting floors in wow yeah yeah actually that's where i just was uh i <laughs> i started my dad's floor about three months ago and then had to stop <laughs> <laughs> oh but but you know what that's what's going to keep you grounded you know, as long as you keep thinking like that, you're going to do just fine. So I know you're excited about getting to work. When do you start? December 14th, which is kind of cool. I have my last school board meeting on the 13th. And at the end of the meeting, I'll officially resign. And then the next day I'll get sworn in. Wow. There you go. Pretty exciting. I mean, you, I mean, I'm sure you're kind of still trying to, you know, it, it, you know, kind of get it all in your head. I am. But at the same time, 
I have met so many good people over the last year that I feel like my support system is mm-hmm. all there. And then, you know, my my father-in-law has been on the city council here for, uh, I want to say, 12 years. And so I've got I've got a good mentor. I'm I have a good relationship with the other council members. So things are things are already going in the right direction. Well, that's excellent. So what I'm going to do is we're going to make you hang on and till the next segment. And then we can talk about some of the goals and aspirations for Escondido. Uh, I see in my notes that you're a longtime San Diego County gun owners, a member and a volunteer. So that's maybe we can chat a little about that and, and get your feeling on Second Amendment and what it's going to take to, uh, you know, keep. You know what I heard the other day? Let me ask you a trivia question. You will say this. Do you know how old the father, founding fathers were when they wrote the, the, the Bill of Rights? I heard they weren't they in some in their 20s. Yes. Mm-hmm. I heard that the other day. I could not believe it. 18, 18, 19, 20. I can't name who was what, but where. But when you stop and think about that and you read that, I bet Ryan probably could have been in that group. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> right? It's, Definitely not me. Yeah, well, me either. Yeah, yeah, kidding. Maybe Action Jackson, but we'll talk about that later. Is there more? Is there a more effective tool that empowers a hundred pound woman to defend against a two hundred pound attacker? That's why it's so important for women to learn how to defend themselves with the most effective self defense tool ever invented. For women, led by women, the Not Me program is designed to help with training, purchasing a gun, and getting a concealed carry permit. And guess what? It's totally free. To sign up, go to NotMeSD.org. The program is also available in Orange County and the Inland Empire. Get help today, notmesd.org. All right, we got Dane White back again. He just won the mayorship of uh, Escondido. Uh, He's also uh, heavily involved with the San Diego County gun owners. So it sounds to me like you're pretty happy with the Second Amendment and would like to leave it exactly the way it is. Very much so. Very much so. Yeah. It actually it's it's played an important role in my life since I can even remember because my my grandparents lived here in Escondido when I was you know three four years old and I remember being in my grandpa's backyard with pop cans and a, a twenty two <laughs> you know very young age and my grandpa you know instilling in me the the rules of gun safety and and to the point where I I've just always been comfortable with firearms and it's always played a big role in my life. T- totally. Totally. Okay, so you're in there, you're the mayor. What's the first thing you'd like to try to accomplish? So first order of business is actually going to be to appoint somebody to the vacant seat. Um, But after that, the very first conversation that needs to start is uh, what are we going to do about homelessness? And, you know, I've been I've been pleasantly surprised. I've had mayors and other council members from other cities reach out to me on several occasions saying they're excited that there are more Republicans to work with in a, a, a regional way mm-hmm. and even got an email today saying, you know, all the mayors need to meet together and come up with a framework of what we want to do collectively to make this happen. So we don't waste the next two or four years that we have control of things like Sandag and, and, and even um, like the, the North County mayors alone all need to be on the same page to tackle this. But for Escondido specifically, what we're going to do is create an ordinance that says you cannot camp or sleep on the sidewalks. Unfortunately, legally, in order to do that, you have to provide beds for the individuals on the streets. So we're going to build emergency, temporary bridge shelters, get folks into the shelters, connected with services, and long-term into permanent supportive housing. Right. See, this is what, you know, and I'm not saying it's the left or the right, but everybody can do their own homework. But we can't complain about it. we got to do something about it. And this problem has been around for as long as I can remember. And it all started... I think it was back in the Reagan years when he closed down all the psychiatric hospitals and just yeah, dumped and these know, people out on the street. What do you, what do you what were you thinking? Yeah, I Yeah, it's yeah. it's a mess for sure and it seems like we dump more and more and more resources into it for the problem only to get worse later on. And here specifically in Escondido, I don't think we've had a new any sort of homeless ordinance passed in at least 8 years. Uh, And the problem just continually gets worse. And the thing is, I personally don't want to build shelters, but at the same time, I've got dozens and dozens of business owners upset because homeless people are defecating on their walls, sleeping in front of their doors and disrupting businesses. And, And we've got to get back to 
allowing people to have property rights and supporting small businesses. And as long as we allow these people to sleep on the streets like that, it's just not going to work. No. And and there's got, like you said, there's got to be a process. And, and we were talking, who were we talking to? Oh, we were talking to uh, Rhonda mm-hmm. about homelessness as our guest in the first hour. And you, you've got to be able to take them off the street and you've got to help them fix their problem. You've got to give them a, an avenue. And if they take it, then they take it. They're off the streets. You don't have to worry about it. You can get it back to a job. You know, there's enough, there's enough businesses out there looking for entry level people. And then the ones that are just sick. And I guess that's just the easiest way to, then you have to hospitalize them and, and until you can get them fixed. So I, I think the job is, can be done. It's just, everybody's going to have to do it and quit doing the same thing over and over and over again, which is just dump money into the prog- problem. Yeah, no doubt. And you know, I've, I, I joke, but it is, it is true. The gentleman before me didn't do anything. So doing something is better than nothing. Right. And then I'll add this, you know, I used to be homeless and I slept behind the Seven Eleven, one of the Seven Elevens here in Escondido. I'm also a product of a local six month outpatient rehabilitation program. And you hear people constantly all the time saying, you know, they don't want help. And I push back against that and say, mm-hmm. at the time, I would have told you I don't want help. But help was given to me when I didn't want it, mm-hmm. and it worked. And I'm not saying it's going to work for everybody, and I'm not saying everybody has the same experience as I had, but we've got to do something. Yeah, you got to at least give the person an opportunity, you know, to say yes or no. And, and then you yeah. have to help them understand that no is not the answer because you do really don't want to stay this way. But, you know, you, I mean, if you were unfortunately homeless, I'm sure you know people out there that would just as soon stay out there. Exactly. And they still, and you know, they still need help. Look, looking at it long term, too, you you got to put yourself in their shoes sometimes and think, okay, if this person's on the street because they're addicted to drugs, simply removing the drugs from their life doesn't change the position yeah. they're in, right? And that to get into permanent housing takes a lot of time, a lot of work, a lot of effort. And uh, I know it sucks. Sometimes we want to be angry at what's going on around us, but we've all got to contribute and do our part and support these people if they do want help. Yeah. And Look, then we have to, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, then you have to put a serious uh, lockdown on drugs and dealing. And if you get caught, yeah. if you get caught, you're not going to get your hand slapped and get out the next day. You are going to go to jail for a real, real long time with no bail. Cause yeah, it, and unfortunately, that's one of the things that I the know. state has control of. And just, that's where that's where a lot of people tend to throw up their hands and say, well, there's nothing we can do. Well, Escondido would look like a really good state. So let's just carve Escondido out. <laughs> We've got orchards. We got oranges. We got avocados. We got plenty of food. We don't need the rest. Wild of Animal Park. We, I and mean, we don't need mm-hmm. any. Hey, we got cruising grand. That's way exactly. more exactly. <laughs> I'm joking, but you know, it's you almost kind of feel that way, don't you? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Then so, I won't let anybody else in either. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well right now, nobody <laughs> wants to come in. Let me tell you. <laughs> I just wish I had stock in U-Haul for the ones that are coming in. I don't know if you've yeah. seen that. It's like $1,500, $1,600 to come to California. <laughs> and it's only... Oh, no, I take that back. It's three fifty to come to California and 1600 to get out of California. Yeah. Yeah. And you've been living here your whole life. So, I mean, the sto- especially Escondido. People don't realize the history and the story of Escondido. And I always tell people you need to look it up. It's the most fascinating story and one of the fastest growing cities really in North County. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize, you know, they, they mined a significant amount of gold and silver out of Escondido. There's all the wineries, there's native American history. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's rich. Totally. You're absolutely right. Um, But it was so funny because I, I literally drive from Alpine to Escondido to get my hair cut. And (laughs) didn't you guys, didn't you guys just get your first like theater? Uh, off a of grand, like a few years back. I mean, you never even had a big theater in your, you know, movies, movie house. You know those well, things. No, we've had a movie theater. That one is cool though because it's a it's a theater, it's a church, it's a coffee oh, house. Oh, okay. okay. They, what they did was re- a quote unquote restore the old theater, but they pretty much tore it all down yeah, and start, rebuilt it. Yeah, started all over again. But uh, 
Well, you know, we're pretty excited for you. Uh, I'm sure we'll stay in touch with you. You'll come to Gun Prom on occasion, and you got to Oh, heck yeah. Stuff. Yeah, go ahead. So, Dave, I, you know, we have the uh, the Sydney County Gunner Christmas Party coming up on December 19th. Will the public at large be able to meet and see you there? Uh, I think so. I know I have it on my calendar. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll be there. Where's Ryan? Where's Ryan? Ooh, yeah, bring Ryan. <laughs> where's Ryan? We want to meet him. Yeah, where's Ryan when you need him? I bet he'll have you out. He'll take care of it for us. We don't need to talk to you. Ryan, <laughs> Ryan stays out of the scenes for the most part. Oh, I had that feeling. But, you know, that's... Hey, he's learned his place, and he sounds like he's doing extremely well at it. So, yeah, it looks like exactly. It, it looks like uh, looks like you're going to stay in politics a while, and looks like he's going to stay on your coattails. Yeah, or leading, you know, one way or the other. Yeah, I, you what know, if... him and my wife were really the ones that ran this whole campaign. <laughs> just tell me where I to go. The dummy that was willing to stand in front of the people. Yeah, exactly. Just tell me where to go. I'm there, <laughs> not not even to be concerned. So. For folks again who don't live in Escondido, what what's a gun atmosphere in a, in Escondido? You know, Escondido has we're the fourth largest city in the county, but we have that very small town vibe, mm-hmm. and I think most people tend to uh, stick to themselves. But here's what I'll say about the Second Amendment in Escondido. Two years ago, when I ran for re-election on the school board, we sent out text messages to a bunch of people in the city. Um, with multiple messages, but on several occasions, people responded and said, he's on the list of endorsed candidates for the San Diego County gun owner. So I already voted for him more so than any other organization. It was dozens. So there's a pretty strong presence of the club here. Mm -hmm. And I think overall, the city tends to be um, at least neutral, Mm -hmm. which is hard to do nowadays. Um, Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, when you come right down to it. But, you know, and and the thing I like about, or I'm hoping what is going to come out of you, is the concentration on Escondido. Not really worry too much about the other cities as much as getting Escondido in the direction that that your whole group wants to be in, in the positive side. Exactly. That's the goal. Yeah, that's the goal. Because... I I would if I was ever in your place I would want my city to be a model city. It's kind of like you know DeSantis in Florida. There's not a state out there that wouldn't like to be like DeSantis and see what he's doing. And you know and that can go down to the small levels like a city like Escondido. And I sure that that would be a great goal. After living here my entire life, being fifth generation, wow. Um, yeah, uh, my my only focus is on Escondido at the moment, and and doing what I can to make it a better city than when I I got here. Right. So, how long is your term? This one. Four years. Probably goes bad. It'll go by like a nanosecond. <laughs> well, I can't believe I I ran for school board six years ago. It's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. See, it's what happens when you get old. No, I'm only kidding. Yeah. What <laughs> was what was the vote spread on 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 your winning there? Uh, I have, I think, 51.6%. Wow. I mean, it wasn't much. When when the yeah. results came out that night, I was only, I was down 31 votes. Oh, that's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah. All right. Hey, so, eh, you're mayor. Nobody, now you don't need to worry about, you know, campaigning. But if people want to ca- stay on track of what Escondido is doing, you know, what, we'll just go to what, the Escondido website? So you can go to www.danemwhite.com, oh, okay. as in danemichaelwhite.com. Um, I'm going to keep that website going. You can follow me on Facebook. If you, wanna, if you want information on the city specifically, escondido.org. Um, yeah, and if uh, any of the listeners are ever in Escondido and, and want to get to know me or the city, just uh, contact me, and I'm, I'm uh, happy to be a part of that. All right, so you got to do me a favor and get ahead of, get, get a hold of Steve Waldron. And tell him to oh, bring, yeah. bring some cars to KUSI to promote Cruising Grand next season. Because I've been yelling at him and yelling at him, and he hasn't come down yet. We'll take care of it. You're the man. All right, buddy. Thank you very much. Have a great holiday season. Say goodbye, action. Goodbye. And in the time it takes to listen to this commercial, your life could change forever. I pray you never for, you're never forced to shoot in self-defense, but if you must, then you must be ready. That's why the USCCA exists.
because every responsibly armed American should have the training and the education to navigate a self-defense situation. And should you ever need it, the 24-7 critical response team is right there for you. To discover more about the USCCA, visit uccacom slash G-O-R. Act now because the life you save could be yours own. USCCA.com slash G-O-R. Well, this is our favorite segment as usual. We wait an hour and 45 minutes to come clicking around. This is Sam the Gunman. That's Michael Schwartz's uh, nephew. And uh, I don't know if you're aware, but Michael's not in today. So you're stuck with us. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Eh, not doing too bad. We got uh, Action Jackson and Alicia. We're sort of holding the fort down. Uh, so Jackson is going to go ahead and read a question and let her rip, Tater Chip. Oh, tell them it's who it's from, too. Uh, ben from El Paso asks, what is RFPI division in in a steel challenge competition? Look at that. Do you notice that, Alicia? He corrected it. He did. He Good did. job. Very nice. Ben so, from El Paso, what was the question again? What is RFPI division in a steel challenge competition? You know, it looks like I'm going to be costing you guys some Denny's spaghetti or uh, gun prom <laughs> tickets because I do not shoot Steel Challenge, so I could not even begin to answer that question. Um, Steel Challenge is a, a, a discipline of competition shooting with which I am not familiar. Um, I'm not a competition shooter, okay. so I'm just going to say right out, I don't know. Wow. Do you know, what, do you know Mike what, isn't here to hear it. Yeah, do you know what round ammo that they use? Or just um, steel challenge matches. I've heard use twenty two long rifle, but again, I don't shoot. Yep, it, so there I don't you know. go. You win. Takes care of that. That's all I wanted <laughs> to see for it. Now the answer is rim fire pistol is open to any twenty two long rifle pistol. There are two divisions: rim fire pistol open (RFPO) and rim fire pistol iron sights (RFPI). So rim fire pistol open is a race division. That allows optics. Rimfire pistols is a pop a popular division to start in because of its affordability. Not only can you buy a cheap twenty two long rifle ammo, but there are many affordable rimfire pistols as well. You'll commonly see the Ruger Mark IV, Browning Buck Mark, because they they're relatively affordable and reliable. And on the higher end, you'll find a fancy souped up one as well. I can't pronounce the name. Don't care. So. <laughs> You actually kind of got it right because the whole, you know, nuts and bolts of it was I thought would be the size of the round, which you hit right on the head. So you knew it kind of. Uh, I knew part of it, but yeah. um, I, I couldn't give the. Uh, I, I don't consider that a correct answer, as I could not give um, an entirely correct answer to the question that was being asked. Oh, and uh, side note um, yes. for those of you out there listening who don't already know this. Um, you uh, you heard Dave say, uh, say that uh, the other division is rimfire pistol open. Mm-hmm. Um, open, when talking about competition guns and competition shooting, generally just means anything goes. So when you hear some, when you're in your favorite gun store and you hear a couple of guys or, or gals at the counter talking about their open guns, now you know what they mean is like crazy souped up competition firearms that. Uh, don't have to conform to certain rules like, oh, it can't have optics. Oh, you have to have short magazines, things like that. So they do the same thing in the in the car community, believe it or not. You know, you can have a bone stock car, you can have a modified car, and then the open class. So I guess it just crosses the board. Got to have a catch-all. Well, there are people out there that want to go as fast or have the baddest, right? Right, just like the Reno Air Races. Are those crazy or what? Is that something you want to do? Um, no, I'm I'm not crazy enough for that yet, but uh, it is the fastest motorsport in the world. I heard yet in that statement. Yeah, I heard yet in there too, yeah. but I wasn't going to say nothing. <laughs> but no, you're you're absolute, and you haven't lived until you've gone to one. That's uh, definitely on the bucket list. Yes. Have you ever been to Oshkosh? Oh, yeah. Uh, most years, I go. Oh, man. Now you're flying in, or are you still driving? Um, we fly to a nearby airport because it's uh, it's very busy there. Yeah. It's the busiest 
control tower in the world for that one week, but I'm hoping to do it soon. See, that one's on my bucket list. I love aviation. I'm not smart enough to get a license, but I love aviation. I mean, and vintage is really where my head's at. You know, I've been up in five B-17s and a B-24. And uh, so I would love to go back there. I don't know how much vintage aircraft. I mean, it's more experimental than vintage, isn't it? It's you, there's a whole section for vintage as far as the eye can see. Really? Now you ruined my day. That means I got to go. But it sounds like, so it sounds, are you going to fly out there this year? Um, I don't know if I'll go this upcoming year, but uh, you definitely need to, uh, to go sometime soon. It's, it's not to be missed. And um, I mean, let me know. We can, we can meet up there and talk. Wouldn't that be a blast? Yeah, I would. I really would. All right. So other than that, everything good? Um, yeah, sorry I couldn't get the question. I've been missing a lot of them lately. I feel like I'm on a losing streak. <laughs> well, it's not a problem because you still amaze us every time you come on. And even the ones you miss, you don't miss. And it's odd that you can give the wrong answer and it sounds perfectly normal and it's correct, but whatever that case may Deductive be. Deductive reasoning, he puts it together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Hey, I'll let you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks a million and say hi to the family. All right. Thanks for having me on, as always. And uh, Ben from El Paso, good question. Boy, isn't that the truth? All right, Jackson, you got a joke? Uh, let me check my you thousand have, jokes. You have a thousand <laughs> joke app? Uh, no, Dad sent me a lot. Oh. Um, I love it. I love it. This one you might know. Why can't you trust an atom? Did you notice how he pulled the phone away so you couldn't cheat? I saw that. Very good action. What's the answer? Don't give me that deer. I thought he was asking look. Sam. No, Sam's already bailed. Why? Oh, so say it again. Okay, so why can't you trust a what? An atom. I don't know. Why I don't know. Can't why you can't trust? you? Yeah, I don't know. Why can't you trust an atom? Because they make up everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a good one. I thought it was going to be something about splitting. So oh, die. I was trying to think, yeah. what, what could splitting have to do? Yeah, I don't know. All right, enough of that. We're all going to go crazy. So, you still down at Discount Gun Mart? I am. Yeah, okay. and I and, uh, I'm actually tomorrow I'm going to be out at South Bay. So, the first two Mondays of every month, you'll find me out at South Bay Run and Gun. For training? Uh, no, I just are. So, I run the range. So, oh. you, you just kind of making sure people don't shoot themselves or others. All right. Speaking of which, yeah. how's Jeff? You heard any more about his gun, or is it just gone but not forgotten? No, it's no, it's good. It, it's the the case is being. Uh, I have to see if I can get an updated picture. The case is being completed, and have you sent him a picture? No, I don't have a picture yet. Okay. So there's no way. And the and the 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 etching is. So remember the gentleman too that that did the the etching and yeah, the, yeah, the optic yeah, yeah, cuts. Yeah, 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 so yeah. he's going to be who's. Oh, yeah. he's doing it. Yeah. How yeah. cool is that? Yeah. That is going to be bad. Yeah. Pretty cool. I got to shoot his pistol. I don't care what anybody says. Right. <laughs> got ammo. I'm ready for you to go. I know. Oh, that's right. He, yeah. he, he keeps asking me. She still got my ammo. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, what else is she going to do with it? Because you don't own a gun that'll no. we'll shoot it. Got a nail and a hammer. I can probably, you know, just damage yeah. the primer. That's about it. That's about yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah. All right, action. So what's going on? Anything? You got another joke? We're killing time if you want to know what that they call that in radio. Uh, Actually, I... I'm not going to peek this time. Staying on my side. You're not going to guess this time? I'm, no, I'm going to stay on my side. I'm not going to Yeah, I know. Don't be cheating. No. Where the heck was it? It was such a good one. Ah, here it is. Oh. Uh-oh. Why did police arrest the turkey? Why did the police arrest a turkey or the turkey? Yeah, the turkey. Wow. Well. Mm, was he trying to gobble something? No. No. They suspected foul play. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, so you're going to be down at the comedy store, you know, tomorrow night, you know, stand up little stand. -up. You know yeah. what? I bet you'd be a star. They would be sitting there in awe. Their jaws would all be dropped, and you're doing these little one-liners off your phone. Yeah, in fact, I'm so good at sleeping, I can do it with my eyes closed. <laughs> See, if we, I'm telling you, <laughs> the kids, the kids should be on there. That's a good dad joke. That, that is a good dad. You know what we should do? We should give him the mic at the Christmas party. I, oh, I think we should, too. What do you think? You could bring your... You could do jokes. Yes, please. Because, you know, <laughs> Mike is kind of... 
<laughs> we'll bring him too. What do you think? We gonna bring the drums too? Yes. Yeah, might as well. We'll be on standby. Right. Hey, it was kind of fun that just the three of us, huh? Yeah. That's a first. Mm. A little bit more co-hosting than normal, but that's okay. It's good for you. The more you do, the better you'll get. Mm-hmm. And thank you very much, dear, for. I know you're still a tad under the weather, but a weather. I'm good. 